Father, we just thank you for your eternal purposes, for your eternal plans. We thank you that you give us glimpses into eternity. Father, we join together today thanking you for your eternal purposes and remembering that in spite of your purposes, the enemy is out to try and spoil those purposes, to try and detract from those purposes and try and annihilate your chosen people. So we remember that today, Lord God, that 12 months ago, this terrible thing happened. And Father, we thank you for what you're doing, that it has been an incredible wake-up call to people of people of good message across the world. We thank you. that repentance is flowing across our globe. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you for the countless miracles that have happened. Miracles of your saving grace. And we just humbly come today, Lord. We bow low before you because you are mighty. You are to be praised and honoured. May you be lifted high. Mm -hmm. And the knowledge of God be released. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Praise God. Anyone else want to join in that opening prayer, Jane, or anyone else have a prayer in your heart? Go ahead. Um, I can't do it yet. Uh, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. Well, Lord, we just say yes and amen to that prayer, that beautiful prayer from Rodney. We just welcome the Holy Spirit. Lord, this is all about you today and your gift of repentance, Shuva, how that in turn will release additional love towards your chosen people and your chosen land. And so we just say Speak through us, Lord. We just give you all praise and honor. And we just love being your children to advance your kingdom. We pray that in Yeshua, Jesus' holy name. Amen. And amen. Just take a few seconds, if you wish, to even in your, whole, your heavenly language, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Woo. Oh, I just felt that. Thank you so much, Owen. Oh, Praise God, there's Thank Joyce. You. Thank you, Joyce, for joining us. This is just a special time, special yeah. day. Of course, every day is with the Lord. 
Thank you, dear God, for this beautiful day. Yes, yes, Amen. yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Mm. Oh, well, again, welcome, everyone. Let's just look at this. Here's this simple picture, but it says so much. A one-year anniversary of the worst violence against Jews since the Holocaust. Mm. And it is a wake-up call just as... Mother just prayed a wake up call for many all over the planet. So thank you for today for joining us. God willing, what we're going to do is uh, go through some scriptures and go through some exercises in private, if you wish. Um, and then prayers of love. And it's simply that once we clean up once we repent to even a residue of a residue of anything that may have been in our family and our nation whatever even in our own lives before we knew the lord any anti-semitism that type of thing once you remove that your prayers of love towards israel will be that much mm -hmm. stronger today so that's really the overall picture of what we're going to do and initially i just want to thank susan for doing this um there's always something last minute we did a whole last minute thing here she's just amazing how she can do this so we mm -hmm. thank you susan. thank you dion uh god bless you guys they're just mm -hmm. an incredible gift to the body of christ yeah well, Praise God. Let's look at the next slide. You know, you've all seen and know a lot of this, but this is really briefly, just for the record, what the shocking carnage was. It was the worst program against the Jewish people since the Holocaust. Children were shot in front of their parents, parents in front of their children. Entire families burned alive. Women were gang raped. Frail, elderly Holocaust survivors brutally executed at point blank range. <clears throat> Babies were bludgeoned, beheaded. One year after that dark day of October 7th, Israel is settling all scores. Radical Islamic terror militias that have been that have had the innocent blood of many nations on their hands, fighting a just war by moral means with dazzling precision. And even um, the Sunni Arab world is cheering the death of some of these Hezbollah people. And so there are still, of course, battles ahead. There's, of course, a spiritual battle as well as a physical battle. So we're hoping today this will add to the spiritual battle of love and truth that will yeah. replace the wicked demonic spirit of violence and hatred towards you. So thank you for joining in this spiritual battle. Ah, and at the same time, it says at the bottom of this page, hostages remain. Psalm 25, one to three says, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. So praise God. It's kind of an overview of what we're doing. Praise God. Let's look at the next slide. By the way, you're welcome to these slides. You can use them to teach as, as you may see fit. Just uh, get in touch with me or with Susan by our emails. And um, now we're going to just do this beautiful, really beautiful song written by our sister in Christ in Messiah, Carolyn Hyde messianic jewish lady in israel she wrote this remarkable song that we play every week every tuesday when we do 
our Shuva focused um, Zoom time for Israel. So now just, ah, oh, just received this beautiful song from Carolyn Hyde. There may be a five or six second earlier interruption, but, or maybe we have it right. It's okay, either way, bring them home. Soap is so harsh on my skin and it doesn't remove all my makeup. Switch to Garnier Micellar Water. It So beautiful. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You know, let's just again use your heavenly language for about a minute and ask the Lord if there's a message that he has for you about the hostage situation. If you want, then we can share that. Oh, 
Oh, yes, Lord. Praise God. <clears throat> well, anyone want to share? Every now and then, the Lord just uses that time, however brief, to uh, say something to you. Anything, I think I received something I'll share in a while, but someone want to go on ahead and share what you might have received, go ahead. Good morning, Pastor Jeff. It's Kathleen. Yes. You know, listening to that song, I just got such a deep sorrow in my spirit and my heart for all those people who have been held captive for over a year now and all of their families who have been missing their loved ones and praying their hearts out for them to come home. So I just yeah. want to join those families in prayer to bring their loved ones home and that mm. all of the um, upheaval in the Middle East would settle down to the point where all the hostages could come back home. And mm. that's my prayer for these people who are so deeply hurting everywhere. The whole yeah. hostage situation is just full of pain and sorrow. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Yes. Anyone else want to share what you might have received from, from the Lord or just um, any comment right now? Going ahead if if you if you need we honor your privacy, but if you really feel you want to share it, go on ahead. Hmm. Well, the insight that I got is I'm not saying it like thus says the Lord, but I'm getting the sense that even for those hostages that died the lord had to have touched them before they died because that's how precious they are to him and that might have been a shock to them the whole thing is a shock but that's my sense that he knew every one of them he counted the hairs on their head whether they fully knew him or not and even if they're no longer alive yeah that's my sense and Joyce, go ahead. I see your hand is up. Yes. I think you're still muted, dear. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, but Father, we come before your throne of grace, recognizing that absolutely nothing is hidden from your face. And we just pray, Lord, that in the name of Yeshua, that you will miraculously release the remaining hostages and that you will show the Israeli soldiers and you will show the innocent bystanders where they are and you will give them divine wisdom to unlock the doors where they're hidden. And Father, whether it be unlocking them physically or spiritually, our faith rests in you. We also pray in the name of Yeshua that you will release your angelic host over the many hostages and you will give them eyes to see and ears to hear where they need to go and how they'll be protected. May they feel the presence of the angels of the most high as the Lord of heaven's armies has released them over them. And we look forward to good reports so that we may continually bring you glory and honor for all you have done and all you are going to do. In the name of Yeshua, we pray this and thank you. Amen. Amen. I love it when you pray. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Woo! Well, anyone else before we move on? This is just some place where one could spend a long time. It's just a very deep issue. Praise God. Praise uh, God. Just, oh, sorry. Um, 
I'm yeah, sorry. I'm just right. so delighted that God continues to do far more than we can imagine in the fact that he's also releasing prisoners from other skirmishes. You know, we, we had the report mm -hmm. only this last week of a uh, of a, 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 a girl that had been kidnapped as a child from Syria, I think, um, mm -hmm. and was being held captive in Gaza and was released by the IDF. And so I, Father, we thank you, the Lord, that you are releasing prisoners, that you are releasing prisoners. And Father, there are probably many more yet to be released. And Father, that um, these things would be revealed. And Lord God, we thank you that you bring people into the light. Lord, physical captives and spiritual captives, it's your work. Jesus, you came. It was a it was a it was a good day, a good day to release the captives. And that day is today. And we thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Rodney. Hold Hi, it up. Eunice here. Um, I had seen on the internet, um, from a Jewish source actually, uh, an instance where a young girl that was released some time ago from the tunnels in Gaza and someone had given her, um, I think on a card or something like that, uh, Psalm 27, and for some reason she, she learned at least two verses, but she learned uh, this before she went into the Nova Festival and was, uh, of course, got kidnapped. But she went over and over the words of Psalm 27 in the Hamas tunnels. And one of, the, I don't know if it was one, but it was one or two, of the Hamas said to her, you've got a light all over you. What is it? And wow. uh, that girl was released. But I've been praying too that um, for the souls and salvation of Hamas as well, that they yes. be released. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, Thank you, Eunice. Wow. As That's well great. as the, 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 because they need a revelation of Jesus, all of them down there. Yes. And um, and there needs to be repentance. So, I, I, do you want me to pray into that again? Yeah. Dear Father, Lord, we come before you in the name of our Saviour, our beautiful, lovely, lovely Rose of Sharon, our dearest Lord Jesus, Yeshua. Father, we thank you that the word of God from beginning to end has power and you are our light. Just as, Father, you were the light in the desert, in the darkness, during those wilderness wanderings, and your glory came down amongst your people. And wherever your people are gathered together, two or three or just a handful, God. You are right in the midst and you are the one that gives us our very breath. And Father, it, it must grieve your heart to see the lostness of all those people caught in the snare of the lies of the devil, the lies of Islam. And we pray in your beautiful son's name for their release, that you would give revelation and encounter with the living Christ down there in the tunnels and throughout the Gaza, in fact, throughout the entire Holy Land, Lord, that you will bring to life the scriptures, any word, Lord, from you that you've had in the past that's been stored up in their hearts, Father, a word from a friend, a word, Father, would you bring alive back into their hearts and minds, Lord, the word of God. And we pray for great courage for those down in the tunnels, Lord, who've been kept captive for so long. Father, you are our hope. 
Lord, you are the hope of Israel. And we speak freedom and life in the name of Yeshua, the mighty one, the salvation. And we pray for full release of all those down in the tunnels from the grips of Satan and his demonic powers. We thank you, Father. Thank you. You hear our prayer. And, Lord, may you be honoured in all of this. Oh, Lord, let the salvation of the Lord be proclaimed throughout the world. Oh, Father, because when your children come and are saved, it's life from the dead. Oh, praise you, Father. We bless you and thank you for your provisions at this time. Please, Lord, by your spirit, work a mighty work of grace down there. Thank you, Lord. Bless your precious children. Amen. Oh, amen. Thank you, Eunice. Yes, yes, yes. Oof. Thank you. Well, praise God. Oh, well, let's look at the next slide. You know, Isaiah is coming alive in our very lifetime. This amazing book that was written six or 700 years before Yeshua Jesus was born is speaks to us today as if he were just our next door neighbor. And um, it's just lovely to read. By the way, you can read it in many different versions on BibleGateway.com. This happens to be the complete Jewish Bible version that was written about 40 or 50 years ago. And so I'm just going to read it into the record. It's also accompanied by Isaiah 54, verse 17, that you all know. But let me start with Isaiah 41, 8 to 16. Israel is assured of God's help. Says it, but you, Israel, my servant, Yaakov, whom I've chosen, descendants of Abraham, my friend, I've taken you from the ends of the earth, summoned you from its most distant parts, and said to you, You are my servant. I've chosen you, not rejected you. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be distressed, for I am your God. I give you strength, I give you help, I support you with my victorious right hand. All those who are angry with you will be disgraced, put to shame. Those who fought against you will be destroyed, brought to nothing. You'll seek them but not find them, those who contended with you. Yes, those who made war with you will be brought to nothing, nothing at all. For I, Adonai, your God, say to you, as I hold your right hand, have no fear, I will help you. Have no fear, Yaakov, you worm, you men of Israel, I will help you, says Adonai. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. I will make you into a threshing sledge, new, with sharp pointed teeth, to thresh the mountains and crush them to dust, to reduce the hills to chaff. As you fan them, the wind will carry them off and the whirlwind will scatter them. Then you will rejoice in Adonai. You will glory in the Holy One of Israel. Woof. Yes, thank you, Lord. And then Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Wow. So you don't need a one-hour sermon from me. Each of you on the line today could use this and do a sermon and I just encourage you to turn to the book of Isaiah. And if you wish, even in play with some different translations, I love the Amplified. I even sometimes love the message. Um, 
and the old King James I love. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's all there, but Israel for sure is assured of God's help. That's an underpinning for all that we're doing here today. God has his timing and his remarkable way that he's bringing about his kingdom. Well, let's look at the next slide. Now, this really is a key insight that I got from a dear friend, uh, Abner Bosky in Beersheba. Uh, Joyce, you have your hand up. Go ahead, Joyce. I love it when you have anything to say. Go ahead. Okay. As you were reading that, the Lord had me look at Isaiah 41, and I'd like to decree this. Yes. Uh, it says, I was the first to tell Zion, look. Help is on the way. I will send Jerusalem a messenger with good news. Not one of your idols told you this. Not one gave any answer when I asked. See, they are all foolish, worthless things. All your idols are as empty as the wind. If I could, I'd like to pray over that. Because I think that's Please. pertinent to what's going on in Israel right now. Yes. Abba yes, Father, okay. we thank you, Lord, that help is on the way to Israel. That is your promise. We thank you, Lord, that you are sending Jerusalem a messenger with good news. And that you are taking down all the idols in Jerusalem and in Israel. Because none of the idols there can speak. Only your word can speak. And so we declare and decree that the Jewish people in Israel and throughout the world will recognize that all their gods are foolish. That all their gods are worthless. And that all their idols are empty as the wind. So we declare and decree that the Jewish people's eyes and ears are being opened to who Yeshua is. For the word says in Isaiah 42, 8 and 9, I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to anyone else, nor share my praise with carved idols. Everything I prophesied has come true. And now I will prophesy again. I will tell you the future before it happens, says the Lord. Wow. Amen. How perfect. Amen. Amen. Pastor that Jeff, yes. this is Francis. Uh, may I pray into that as well? Yes, sure. So, Lord, as this is the year um, since the attack on Israel, and it was that Nova event where they were worshiping idols that opened the doors, but actually may have saved people from being um, more people being killed because they went off their plan. But as being half Jewish myself and growing up in a Jewish neighborhood, I know that it's very acceptable for Jewish people to become Buddhists. So we bind that spirit of Buddhism in particular off of the Jewish people no more being called boo Jews or Jew boos in the name of Jesus. I believe it's time, Lord God, especially on this anniversary, that they will know that it's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Buddha has nothing to do with anything right. in their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's exactly spot on. Exactly correct. Thank you, Francis. And, uh, yeah. Stefania, you've got your hand up. Go on ahead. Thank you. Uh, this is in confirmation of what Joyce and Francis um, have, have brought up. The Lord had taken me to Ezekiel 14, 6, and I specifically was thinking of the dance festival in Nova. And one of the things that has been happening in Israel is the people, you know, saying that they're rising up from the ashes. They're declaring we will dance again. But it's almost it's it's like a it they they're they're looking at it as they won't be 
they won't be suppressed. But in truth, they were they were worshiping because there was hedonism going on in the in the Nova Festival. There were all kinds of debauchery and other things going on. And just as Francis said about the Buddhist and 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 everything, what they were embracing was things other than the Lord. And yeah. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 14, 6 uh, says, um, starting at 5, actually. Okay, I'm going to start at 4. Thus says the Lord God, everyone of the house of Israel who sets up his idols in his heart and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity and then comes to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him who comes according to the multitude of his idols that I may seize the house of Israel by their heart, because they are all estranged by, from me by their idols. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, repent, turn away from your idols and turn your faces away from all your abominations. For anyone of the house of Israel or of the strangers who dwell in Israel, who separates himself from me and sets up his idols in his heart and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity then comes to a then he, it's like coming to a prophet to inquire oh i'm sinning but i can you know i'm going to go to the prophet and ask him to give me a word from the lord it's two-faced it's two-faced and yeah. um there have been some of the hostages that have been released and they are showing their people look at it as they're, they're saying, look at how they've risen above what happened to them. Yet these people in some of the things that they're doing, instead of giving glory to God that they were rescued, they're, they're, they're actually demonstrating again, the same kind of debauchery. So father, just as, just as the prayers that have gone before, before us about, uh, uh, about them repenting father, your word says that rebellion is as witchcraft in Isaiah. It also says that stubbornness is as idolatry. So, Father, we decree, we decree and we declare that the stubbornness of Israel to turn away from you, to seek other gods, to to uh, and for your people, Father, who are strangers in the land, Father, that everywhere that they are, um, everywhere that they are continuing to be stubborn, that they are idolizing, that they themselves are greater than you, the Lord God of heaven and earth, their creator. Father, we, we ask for a humbling to come upon them, but to do it by the power of your Ruach HaKodesh, by the power of your Holy Spirit, not that they would be destroyed, but that they would be humbled because of your spirit coming upon them. We ask, Father God, whether they know Yeshua or not. Father, we ask, let your Holy Spirit come upon each and every one of them. Give them dreams, visions, whatever it takes, Father God. But they would res that they would re repent and turn away from their stubbornness. That they would repent and turn away from wickedness, from witchcraft. Father, all, all who have been in prison, all who have suffered, all of these hostages, Father God, every one of them. We know that there are hostages that were taken from the Nova, but we know that there were hostages taken from kibbutz and from villages. And Father, we just ask, Lord, let your spirit come in. Let your spirit flood over them. Let your spirit wash over them. And just as that, that, that young woman who had a portion of the song, Father, she grabbed onto it. Let them begin to grab onto every word of scripture that they have ever heard in their life. Holy Spirit of the living God, bring back to their remembrance from their childhood when their parents would pray over them. And then they departed from the ways of their parents and they went into the 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 they went into rebellion. Father, let them recall the words of the word. Let them recall the words of the word. Restore to them the memory of your word, Father God. Restore to them the memory of the Psalms. Restore to them the warnings of Isaiah and Ezekiel and Jeremiah. 
Father, restore to them the, that which they have heard read to them and spoken to them in the Tanakh. Father, restore their memory and let them turn from wicked ways and let them repent and ask for your forgiveness. Father, each and every one, not only the people of Israel, not only the hostages, but the Jews worldwide and those who have been called as Gentiles, but who have, who have, and those who have turned to you, Lord, because there are many in the body of Christ, Father God, there are many in the body of Christ who have set up their own idols. They've set up fame and celebrity. They've set up riches and assets as their idols. And Lord, you have been secondary, but they have set up these idols in their mind. They have set up their own intellect. They have set up their own intelligence, their own ideas, and said that it supersedes you and your word. Lord, let us all repent in Yeshua's name. Let the spirit of repentance be released in the earth in Yeshua's name. Uh, Pastor Jeff, this, this is Francis again. In response to something that Stefania said, she said, let them remember the scriptures from when they were little. Now, if they were in a halfway religious Jewish household, on Friday, the ironic blessing was said over all Jewish children. So I just, in my not-so-great Hebrew, I would like to put that into the atmosphere for all Jews Sure. that they would yes. hear the ironic blessing. May the Lord bless them. May the Lord keep them. May the Lord make his face to shine upon them and give them peace. And Lord, may they hear this as if it was spoken through you, like the blowing of the shofar, Lord God, that their hearts on this day not all Jews are in pain, but many are. Um, let them realize that you have put the, your name on them. And when it's said that prayer is said, that Aaron was put, put the name on his, uh, your people, Lord God. So I say that with, with respect as the daughter of the Most High God, who is, uh, has some Jewish heritage, so, Lord, I just bless these people that they would remember that scripture and remember that you love them and you bless them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Really good. Thank you. Wow. This has been such an extraordinary call already. Lori, you've got your hand up. Go ahead. Uh, well, what the Lord is putting on my heart also is reminding me of his choices and how he carries things out in his totality. But he has chosen this people, this small group of people, to be his witness on the earth. And he uses them in all kinds of ways. He's tremendously using them now for their own sake and for the sake of the world, for those that are around them, just like in Psalm 83. He's stressing Psalm 83 to me. And uh, that, because uh, even the countries that supposedly have a peace treaty, with Israel, such as in Egypt and in Jordan, that we know that uh, they are full of people, even in the church, Coptic, for example, that um, that are really, unfortunately, still have a hatred of the Jewish people, not just the people in Hamas or Hezbollah, that they're, they're, they're surrounded. And then there's the church and the anti-Semitism. And then there are the Jews who are, who are pre-believers, who uh, the veil has not been lifted from their eyes, right? But the miracles even that are happening now that we hear about daily, uh, as God always has fought for them in their wars. I don't think there's one war they would have won unless God had entered into it. Today is the same. But the verses in Psalm 83 that are, stand out to me are starting with 13. Oh my God, make them like a wheel as a stubble before the wind. As the fire burns a wood and as the flame sets the mountains on fire, so persecute them with tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Let them be put to shame and perish that men may know 
that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. And that includes everybody in the Jews, the Christian community, the terrorist, and so on. All, and the church that needs to repent. All of us need to recognize and acknowledge that God is at work in all kinds of ways and marvelous are his works and he's in complete control. And I just want to give him all the praise, honor, and glory that there, that all that might know him come into his kingdom and that he would receive all the fear of the Lord and the glory that he so deserves. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Oh, well said. Thank you, Lori. Mm -hmm. And Joyce, there you are again. I'd love to hear what you've got in your heart. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I thank you, Lori, for ending the way you did because um, that's exactly what the Lord was telling me, that the Lord is, <laughs> he is in control, but he also was telling me about what Francis had said as Francis was praying the uh, ironic blessing, I saw clouds of angels hovering over Israel and especially over the Israeli soldiers. And so the Lord has just released such a uh, enormous release of his angelic host over Israel, even as uh, Francis was praying, it was so powerful. And it was as if the, the clouds of angels were descending over Israel and people look at Israel as being this small country, which of course it is, but Israel has the blessing. It has the ironic blessing of Yeshua himself, which as we know that are on this line, there's nothing greater than being blessed by Yeshua. So the Lord, I want to pray into that, Pastor Jeff, if that's okay. Please. Abba Father, I just... Thank you. Thank you for releasing your angelic host in such a manifest way over your chosen people, Israel. I just thank you that even as you showed me that vision, that not only are you releasing your spirit in Israel, in the whole country, but you're releasing your wisdom, your knowledge, but most of all, you're releasing your strength. And you're taking down the plans of the enemy. And you're sending your warrior angels to do what you do best. And that's take over and lead the country into the freedom that you destined them to have. And we thank you, Lord, that not only are they released over Israel in a physical release, but they're released with a spiritual power which flows from your throne, which draws the lost of Israel to Jesus, but it also blesses those who are messianic, be they Jew or Gentile, and allows them to feel the spirit of the Lord being released over that nation. And we thank you, Lord, that as your spirit is being released over Israel, that the walls are coming up that the angels are binding the evil one, that the angels are fighting for the Jewish people, that the angels are fighting for all of us because Yeshua is giving them his authority to take back what the enemy has stolen from both Jews and Gentiles in this nation and the nations. And the Lord says, I am in Israel, and I am here, and I am taking back what the Jewish people, number one, I'm taking back not only what's been stolen from them, but I'm taking back the lies that have been told to them that have prevented them from knowing me, says the Lord. And as I take back the lies that they have listened to, that they have followed, that they have been disobedient to my word. I'm bringing forth not only the Torah, but the word of God after the Torah that tells who I am, says the Lord. 
And the Lord says, as I release my spirit over Israel, I am releasing signs, wonders, and miracles that can only bring me glory and bring the lost of Israel to me, says the Lord Most High. Amen and amen. Pastor Jeff, I'm sorry to be a hog, but... <laughs> Uh, the Lord is speaking, you know, how many, you know me a long time, you know, this is my thing. So, yes. <laughs> all righty, yeah. um, Psalm 105, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'd like to read some of it. Give thanks to Yahweh, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing praises to him, speak of all his wonders. Make your boast in his set-apart name. Let the heart rejoice of those seeking Yahweh. Seek Yahweh and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember his wonders, which he has done. His miracles and the right rulings of his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant, children of Yaakov, his chosen ones. He is Yahweh, our Elohim. His right rulings are in all the earth. He has remembered his covenant forever. The word he has commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham, his oath to Yitzhak, and established it to Yaakov for a law to Yisrael, an everlasting covenant, saying to you, I give you the land of Canaan, the portion of your inheritance, when they were few in number, few indeed, and sojourners in, in it. They went about from one nation to another, from one reign to another people. He allowed no one to oppress them, and he reproved um, sovereigns for their sakes, saying, do not touch my anointed ones, and do my prophets no harm. So, Lord, we thank you. The name, I believe, from what I understand, that you hold above all names is Elohim. But you're also, I forgot the name, it's El, uh, Brit, whatever. You're a covenant-keeping God. And if you didn't keep your covenant with your chosen people, there would no, be re no reason to believe that there would be a covenant kept between those who come into the kingdom through the acceptance of Yeshua. And Lord, I do believe you're ready to pour out your spirit in the fullness. And there's no mistake that this happened last year on Simchas Torah, and it's between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the days of war. We're going to see your mighty hand. You're the mighty one of Israel, and you have, you've had a plan. You've told us in Isaiah, you've told us the end from the beginning, and you're about ready to show your glory. And as the blessings are going to come out, they're going to come first in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and if the Gog Magog war is really around the corner, Damascus will be obliterated, and that's when the blindness will fall off many people. So we thank you, Lord, that you're a covenant keeping God and that your word, you are El Emmet. Your word is true from Genesis to Revelation, and you are El Olam, and you change it not. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you during these days of war. Wake up your people in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Uh, thank you, Francis. And by the way, Susan has been posting these scriptures on the chat. Thank you, Susan. And uh, it's so interesting. This all came up with the book of Ruth, which we're going to look at in a minute. But I also want to honor Stefania here. Um, she's still got her hand up. Go on ahead, Stefania. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is a uh, this is something that was posted yesterday on Israel 365 News, and I I believe it shows that there's a new desperation in Israel for the Lord that they haven't had in a long time. On Thursday, the first day of Rosh Hashanah, a group of Jews smuggled shofarot the the multiple uh, shofar. Many people secreted small shofars on their, their purses, persons. They went onto the Temple Mount and despite police efforts to stop them, they blew all the requisite shofar blasts for the holiday. Ah. 
it should be emphasized that this is probably the first time since the second temple stood that the shofar has sounded on the Temple Mount. Now, each of, each, of those, each of those people who blew the shofar, immediately the police went and confiscated their shofar. But then the next person who had a shofar whipped it out, <laughs> blew their tin blast by the time the police got there, confiscated. Then the, then the next one, you know, they and these people were removed from the Temple Mount until all of it was done and the prayers were pronounced. And then the police afterwards gave them all back their shofars. <laughs> so I believe, and, and um, it, it says that approximately 50 Jews ascended to the mount at 7 a.m., the first moment the Jews were permitted to enter the holy site. Many of them were wearing their traditional holiday garb. They prayed the entire Rosh Hashanah service, which included the full body prostrations. Now that is the repentance, is it not? Before yeah, them, the yeah, prostrations. Yeah. The Torah commands Jews to prostrate themselves before God on the Temple Mount, and it's strictly <laughs> forbidden for a Jew to prostrate himself in prayer in any other location. This commandment is an essential element that will reappear in the times of Messiah. We are in the times of Messiah. They just may not have met, understood that yet. Right. And well, it says, in, I, I, in Isaiah 27, 13, and on that day, a great shofar shall be sounded, and the strayed who are in the land of Assyria, and the expect, expelled who are in the land of Egypt, shall come and worship, worship Hashem on the holy mount in Jerusalem. So there's there's more to it, but that I thought that that was very significant. That there is a, a hunger unlike anything that they have experienced in a long time. Yes. Wow. Uh Stay I'd like curious. to add to that. They were silver. I believe they were silver shofars, and if it was fifty of them, it was because they were believing it's a jubilee. So they're uh, they're they're into their gematria into that. And I also just want to say on Amir Safati's um, blog, he's saying that the news reporters in Israel, when they're reporting what's going on. They're saying that we are in biblical times. They're they know Messiah is coming soon, more and more of them. They just don't know who he is, but they're ready, a lot of the Orthodox Jews. So we thank you, Lord, that you are taking off the blinders and that there are many young Jewish men who are reading the Psalms like never before in the IDF. They're gonna, it's going to be young ones leading the old ones to your truth, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, now this all connects with this slide and this book of Ruth. Um, and I really thank, again, Abner Bosky for giving me this insight that the God of Jacob is looking for people from all across the planet that would even include today's Israel, as well as the other 205 nations on the planet, who have Ruth's heart for the Jewish people, who are willing to swear a covenant of love and loyalty to them as the firstborn nation of Yahweh. And so here's an excerpt from chapter one of Ruth. And says, then she said, behold, your daughter-in-law has gone back to her people and her gods return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, don't plead with me to leave you or to turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you sleep, I will sleep. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I'll be buried. May the Lord do so to me and worse, if anything but death separates me from you. And so when she saw she was determined to go with her, she, Naomi, stopped speaking to Ruth about it. Praise God. Well, so we're to have that very love. Yes, Stefania, go ahead. Um, I, I'm sorry to interrupt again, but... Um, I just got a, <clears throat> a text from a, a prophet to the nations in Nigeria who posted today on Twitter a prophecy about Israel. 
plus decrees. He wants to, I, I, he'd like to join. I, this is someone that I minister with. So, um, he wants to, wants me to send the link. Do I have permission to send him the link to the oh, Zoom? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Okay, okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, what an exciting time. Now, listen, as you look at this issue about having the heart of Ruth for the Jewish people, that's the goal today. Uh, it will include some repenting times, and then we will have prayers of love towards the Jewish people. Um, listen, now at this beautiful song, uh, worship song really again by our messianic brother in Jerusalem, Baruch J. Harris, never again, just absorb this beautiful song. God bless you. Never again will your people stand alone Never again will they be left without a home Never again will they think they have been abandoned For all will know this is the place God has his hand on Never again will we dare avert our eye From the land away silently to die never again let our country bar the doors to the tattered ships that flee from deadly shores never again never again hero israel never Never again allow the world to turn its head And pretend innocent blood has not been shed For our God has joined us spirit, flesh and bone We shall be to you a wall of living stone Never again, never again Hero Israel, never again, never again will you hang your head in shame, for your God has brought you back to praise his name, never again, never again, now a kingdom has awakened to your pain, though around you gather all the And his temple before men And cause all the earth to praise Jerusalem Never again, never again I promise Israel Never again, never again Will you hang your head in shame For your God has brought you back Praise His name Never again Never again I promise Israel Never again This is a warning To all the hordes of hell You'll face the power Of God's love for Israel You'll face the power Of God's love for Israel I lay down my life in love for his right, yeah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise yes. you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. That man is so anointed. He has a CD out that I just cannot stop listening to. That man is just so gifted. I love the one line where it says, you'll face the power of God's love for Israel. There's nothing can stand against that power of God's love. Praise God. Praise God. Well, let's look at the next slide. This has just been such a beautiful um beautiful call already this is also part of in a way the big picture all of this uh you know but i'm i'm putting it in the record so to speak chosen people almighty god chose israelites as his chosen people look at deuteronomy 7 verses 6 through 11 in the complete jewish bible it says you're a people Set apart as holy for Adonai, your God. Adonai, your God, has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his own unique treasure. Adonai didn't set his heart on you or choose you because you numbered more than any other people. On the contrary, you were the fewest of all peoples. Rather, it was because Adonai loved you and because he wanted to keep the oath which he had sworn to your ancestors, that Adonai brought you out with a strong hand and redeemed you from a life of slavery under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. From this you can know that Adonai, your God, is indeed God, the faithful God, who keeps his covenant and extends grace to those who love him and observe his mitzvah, his commandment to a thousand generations, but he repays those who hate him to their face and destroys them. He will not be slow to deal with someone who hates him. He will repay him to his face. Therefore, you are to keep the mitzvah laws and rulings, which I'm giving you today and obey them. Wow. So here, to experience the love for Israel that Ruth had, and now Jew and Gentile, we need first to repent of any way in which we placed our own idols in front of Almighty God and his chosen people. So what we're going to do in private, this is in private, so you can really feel free to speak in your prayer chamber for three minutes with the Lord, is there any way in which you have placed an idol in front of the chosen people? And if you later want to share, that's great. But again, I, I will always honor your privacy in these three minute exercises. This may be the one thing unique about our repentance calls every week. We give you privacy so you can really repent. You might have I don't know. I don't even want to make it up, but you might have some way in which you have not fully seen this as a chosen people. You might have put some idol in a way of it. So I'll be quiet. I will check back in in three minutes. It's private. You and your Holy Spirit teacher. See if there's any remnant of a remnant of a an idol in front of this truth. So God bless you.
Well, praise God. Thank you so much for spending time with the Holy Spirit. I honor your privacy. And does anyone want to share if that's something that you really feel is on your heart to share? Something you worked out on that? Going ahead. Well, Pastor Jeff, it's not it's not a, a repentance for me, but I think it may help people to understand since my father was Jewish and my mother was Catholic, how long it took me to understand who Jesus was or is. Yeah. And I listened to Jonathan Kahn, Jonathan Burness, and I think I've heard it also from other Messianic Jews that they grew up in neighborhoods where there were Catholics. And the Catholics don't really worship Jesus as a God Jewish man. And yeah. I went to Catholic churches mainly. But this could be false theologies in the Presbyterian churches, in the Episcopalian, I don't know so much about the Baptist, the Methodist, that some of what's going on is not that Jesus is a stumbling block. It's these false theologies of Christianity, of quote Christianity, that are stopping Jews from coming to know Jesus. But I guess God has allowed it because it says in the book of Romans that he has blinded the Jews um, until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. And actually, I heard this on a prayer call that Rick Renner, who's a Greek scholar, said that it's not just a, a spiritual blindness. It's that he's put the Jews in a prison of blindness because he loved the whole world so much that if he allowed all the Jews to be saved right away, then the Gentiles wouldn't have been able to come in, at least under his plan and at least as I understand it. So, Lord, I, play, I pray for the Jews and the Christians, the true Christians, and those who think they're Christians, to have a deeper understanding of what your plan was between Jew and Gentile, that one new man in Christ, and what the stumbling blocks are from the Jewish perspective and from the, quote, Christian perspective. So, because Jesus is coming soon, and you want many in your kingdom, Lord God, and we just pray for them to have the wisdom, the understanding, for the strongholds and the blindness to come down, so that they would be in line with your will and your way, to know that you are Father, you are Jesus, and you are Holy Spirit, and that you have a plan that's set forth from Genesis to Revelation in your word. So in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good point. Yes, we're going to get to that. That you're, you're ahead of the curve. That's really good. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. It's a really a compliment. You're really, it's great to have you, Francis. And also here we have our hand up from Olivia all the way from Australia. And then Rodney from Australia. Praise God. Well, Olivia, you had your hand up first. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just going to say this as a prayer. Um, mm. Lord Jesus, Son of God, Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, Lord, I want to repent in the presence of the family of God, one new man, Lord, of for the Gentiles placing um, stumbling block in the form of denominations in front of, Lord, your people, Israel, and seeking to be justified in our own eyes, Lord, where we have not witnessed to your people as you want us to witness also as your people, Lord, through being one and um, through not allowing the enemy to come in um, through exercising discernment, Lord, and above all, Lord, we repent for um, seeking to be justified in our own eyes. And, Lord, this is our sin. Um, and where we have called the enemy, um, where we have rebuked you, um, instead of uh, repenting and where we have blamed the enemy for our divisions instead of repenting ourselves 
and digging our heels in and has been brought already the stubbornness that is idolatry. Lord, we ask you to put this away from before the face of your people Israel that they will not that you will forgive us, Lord, and they will not be hindered from entering back in and being grafted back into the true root and manifesting your glory before the nations for any reason because of your Gentile church. Lord, thank you that we are as one in you and that every part is for the benefit of every other part. And thank you for the high calling you have for each one. Thank you that you love us as children and you as our father. And thank you, Lord, that you ha the times are in your hands. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we commit ourselves as one people, as one new man, Jew and Gentile, into your hands as we know. And we pray this, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. We come to your table and your feet, and we thank you that we can pray these things with confidence because they are in your word. They were in your heart first, Lord. We did not choose you either Jew or Gentile, but you chose us. Thank you, Lord, that you are faithful to every generation. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Olivia. And Rodney, go ahead, brother. I, thank you. I just had this... Um, I'm not... Whether it was from the Lord or what it was, but the word was willingness... And so I applaud the willingness of you, brothers and sisters, the willingness to, to just lay your hearts before God, opening up, waiting on him to see and asking, is there anything in me that is blotting um, out your purposes, Lord? And, and he just wants to honour, and I want to honour, your willingness, because that's what he's after, our willingness and our worship. And, um, yeah, that's what it is. And um, I bid you all farewell. I am going back to bed. God bless you. Ah, oh, bless you, brother. Early morning, three, 2 or 3 a.m. in Australia. God bless you, man. Sure love you, brother. Thank you, Rodney. Praise God. Mighty man of God. Mighty man of God. Well, praise God, praise God. Um, Olivia, did you have one more thing? Your, is your hand is still up there. Or maybe you've already spoken. Yeah, I guess she has. Well, let's look at the next slide. Now, this is a really key insight. Um, I'm open to having this debated if you think that I've misinterpreted this, but look at this truth. And we look at Matthew 27, verses 24 to 26. And you know this story backwards and forwards, but look at this. The Jews chose Yeshua over Barabbas, it says, when Pilate saw that he was accomplishing nothing, but rather that a riot was starting, he took water, washed his hands in front of the crowd, and said, my hands are clean of this man's blood. It's your responsibility. All the people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. And then he released to them Barabbas, but Yeshua, after Having him whipped, he handed over to be executed on a stake. That's the complete Jewish Bible version. It's the same in your versions. And at one point, the Lord had me reread that and reread it. And what I got is that that having happened, Yeshua having been executed, 
He then rose from the dead. He's now living. And therefore, his blood is a blessing. It's not a curse. It's now on all Jews and their ch children and all Gentiles and their children, should they choose to receive it. As it says in Luke 22, 20, it says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. And then the earlier one in Hebrews, it says, therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, so that the truth of what they said, the people answering, his blood is on us and on our children. Romans and Christians for centuries used this as an excuse for replacement theology and for killing, mm -hmm. horrifically beating, treating all Jews. They used it as an excuse when indeed it's a blessing, a blessing. A blessing. So we're in a minute, we will do uh, another one of these processes for a couple of minutes. But Stefania, you have your hand up. I want to honor your uh, hand up. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get somebody connected from Nigeria. So, um, okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to multitask because he had a prophetic word for Israel today, and I think it's really important if he can release this on the call. I think this is this is important. So I'm trying to get him with the right information. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> Sorry. Well, well, bless you. Well, you can jump in whenever that happens. Yes, yes, yes. Well, Pastor Jeff, I have a yeah. thought on this. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, as you probably were certain that I would. Well, as we know, Judas was given, you know, Jesus says in June, uh, in John 17, that uh, Judas played his role. Um, he didn't lose, he didn't lose anybody except Judas. That was pre, basically preordained. And we know God pardoned Pharaoh's heart so that the Jews would go. So maybe he hardened some of these um, Pharisees so that the scriptures would be fulfilled. So yeah. we don't, you know, I hear people, Christians and Jews, talking about God is in control. And yes, he's in control. But yet then there's time we blame other people. So that's one of my big questions when I get to heaven. How much did we have control and how much was his control? And I think we need to, you know, as Jews and Christians, to really, you know, inquire of the Lord. I mean, we can't find out every aspect of that. But in our own personal lives, how much we have control and how much he's controlling our lives. And I think that's really important. And, you know, and just as a, a side note, I know Christians say this. That they met, that the Jews met, uh, missed Jesus's visitation, and that's not true. There were many Jews who received Jesus as Messiah, the, the twelve apostles, and there are some Christians who are now not believing that Jesus is coming soon. So are they going to miss his second visitation? So I, I just put that out there in Jesus's name. Oh, thank you. And Joyce, you have your hand up. Go ahead, sister. Okay. Uh, I want to like double repent, if that makes sense. Uh, I want to go back and I want to repent for myself, my family, and all those who actually use replacement theology, not recognizing who the Jews were, even though we knew the word, we thought the church was going to be the savior instead of the church of Christ, or Jesus Christ was going to be the savior when actually Christ, Jesus Christ himself was coming to not only save the Jews, I mean the Gentiles, but the Jews as well. So I repent 
for false beliefs in me and my family, my city, my state, my nation, and the church throughout the nations that for the confusion we had concerning replacement theology in the past, in the present, and we pray that it will end before the future. And I also pray in the name of Jesus, and I repent on behalf of those during biblical times up to the present for those who felt like they wrongfully condemned killing Jesus. For your word says, Father, to, uh, to repent of our sins and to go forth and do great exploits for your kingdom. So Lord, this is my prayer that however poorly I'm doing it, that you will not only forgive those of us who grew up with replacement theology and put everyone on the right track, and you will also forgive anything in anyone's inheritance, be they Jewish today or not, anything in, our, in the past for the Jews that may have been carried over through these centuries. And so, Lord, we know how the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And today, in the name of Yeshua, we say we repent for our past sins and the sins of our generations. And we ask your forgiveness so that we can all walk in the truth. Those Jews who may fit, those Jews, Jewish families who may still feel like they can kill Jesus and are still under condemnation. And I repent for those who grew up in the church that accepted replacement theology that you will forgive us as well. And so, Lord, I just thank you that you're God and that you do all things well. And I bless you for hearing my prayers uh, mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love that. Right on, spot on. As is this excellent chat from Eunice down in Melbourne. Again, thanks for getting up so early. And she says, she says, the Jews who said, may his blood be on us and our children, may have meant this as a curse, but Jesus Yeshua became a curse for us. Cursed is he who's hung on a tree. Yes, yes, yes. He, he used it. He turned it around perfectly. So thank you. This is really healing. In fact, you know, I think we can look at the next slide. Yeah, what we have here is just a brief listing of the terror and the death imposed on Jews over the last 2,000 years. Horrific treatment by the Romans. Um, and then, of course, they tore down the walls. They tore down the Temple Mount. The Jews were expelled from England in 1290 AD, from Spain in 1492. <clears throat> and on the 9th of Av, all these were on that same 9th of Av. That was also a day in World War I where Germany declared war and Russia led to a broadening of that war. That in turn led to World War II and Hitler decision to it exterminate the Jews, leading to the Holocaust. And then modern Israel, wow, starting with their founding in 1948, an immediate war, and then a six-day war, then the Yom Kippur War, a Lebanon War in 1982, and then the Intifada, a war then with Hezbollah, which is still going on today, these Gaza wars, 2008 and 12, 14 and 21. And then, of course, this Hamas war a year ago, October 7. So now we're going to do a private exercise. Just as totally in keeping with what Joyce has prayed. 
So just in private with your teacher, the Holy Spirit, open your mind and your heart to repent for yourself or your family or your nation for any of this misunderstanding of the chosen people and in any way that it is connected to any of these horrific incidents, uh, God knows, I have no idea. And it's private, you don't even need to share, but it's a time for you in private to just remove anything that has in any way come against Jews and treating them with violence. So I'll be quiet and then check back in in three minutes. God bless you. Well, praise God. Thank you for spending time with the Holy Spirit. Again, it's private, but does anyone have to share about any of this? Going ahead. Well, praise God. Again, this is a good teaching slide. You're welcome to all these slides. They're free. Just get a hold of Susan later on the some of the last slides, you'll see her email, you'll see my email. And uh, we're all teachers of our neighbors, our family, our community, our village, all over the planet. And any of this, you're welcome to use. And we just so appreciate your being on today. Let's look at the next slide. 
Pastor Jeff, I'll just start to repent on behalf of, um, we've got a minority government ruling and they are going against um, the word of God, against the Lord. Um, our, um, we've got very, very badly, uh, very wrong living people in high places. And our uh, foreign minister, Penny Wong, um, uh, presented it. United Nations this past week, a very anti-Israel rant um, and uh, a speech. And um, I'd like to repent on behalf of what this minority government is doing, if that's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Dear Father, people say that we get the government we deserve, but we did not vote this wicked government in Father. And Lord, I'd just like to repent on behalf of the words and the attitude that's come forth, Father. Uh, Miss Wong refused to go down to near Oz, the kibbutz, when she was there in Israel. Father, I just pray repenting because of what this government has done, um, being pro the terrorists here in this country. And I repent, Lord, of the wickedness that's been on our streets, which has disrupted much of our uh, city life. Precious Saviour, I repent of the words that have come out on the World Forum from Mrs. Miss Wong's um, mouth and yes, re please. Lord would you rebuke those words and bring a deep sense of conviction of sin, judgment and of righteousness on all those in high places Lord who are rebelling both in lifestyle and in words and in thoughts and ways against you Lord we pray for a revelation of Jesus that the words of God which have been spoken in the past would come back and, Lord, by your powerful Holy Spirit, oh, Father, that the spirit of conviction would come. Oh, Lord, too, that you would remove all from government who are rebellious against the word and against you, Lord. Please have mercy, Father, on this country and indeed on all your people. Oh, Father, may the word of God go forth under the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit and there be a massive turning back to you, a massive repentance, Father. Please have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Have mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I love it when you pray, Eunice. That was spot on. Thank you. And now Joyce has her hand up. Go ahead, Joyce. Okay. Uh I want to repent for America. Uh, but Father, we come before your throne of grace, thanking you for the mercies you have shown us for many years and thanking you for those who are willing to affirm who Israel was and take the probably uh, spiritual and physical beatings uh, of generations. And Father, we repent for not recognizing who you are. But most importantly of all today, we come before your throne of grace, repenting for the leaders in our nation who still refuse to acknowledge Israel, your chosen people. And we pray, Lord, that in the name of Yeshua, that you will forgive them or remove them. We pray, Lord, that you will take what you promise in your word which is you will take what Satan meant for evil in the United States of America. Father, there are so many people right now 
praying for the, I pray that somehow you will take all the, those prayers and put them in the bowls of heaven and that we as intercessors and those in a fivefold ministry will know how to tip, fill those bowls till they tip over until this nation is cleansed one recognizes Israel as your chosen people that we will once again stand with Israel and we will not fall and father we thank you that we have your promise promises which are yes and amen and we have your promises that where two or more gathered in your name you are there in the midst and so we lay our concerns at the altar of the Most High God. And we ask you to do whatever you know best to rid us of those who refuse to acknowledge your chosen people and to bring us all into alignment to recognize who Israel is and to bless them. It is in the name of Yeshua, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Mm, amen. How beautiful. Thank you, Joyce. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Well, speaking of mercy, on this one page, which should be a summary of a summary of a summary of a summary of the Lord's plan. It's just a, a teaching page for you to show your students, your family, your neighbors, your village, your community, God's beautiful eternal plan. Uh, the one I wanna highlight is the second one. This is Jonah, the book of Jonah chapter three, verse 10. I love this because it shows the it shows the beautiful side of the Lord that he's so merciful. It says, then God saw their works. This is the most pagan, wicked city on the planet, Nineveh at the time. Uh, my own city of San Francisco is fighting to be replacement of Nineveh. But in, here's, here's Nineveh and Jonah. It, it says, then God saw their works, the, the works of the king of Nineveh, the, all the people, even the animals, that they turned from their evil way. And God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Period. That's our Lord. Incredible when we do repent and if the wicked king of Nineveh could turn his heart and his mind around then it's possible all over the planet so this is just a glimmer of a glimmer of the Lord's plan but it's a very key one necessary today I know where I live and really all over the planet all over the planet. So praise God. The other one that we put number one here is one that we love to talk about every, almost every Zoom now. Um, this is from Daniel chapter two, 42 to 45. It just shows God's hand over everything. It says, as the toes were partly iron and partly clay, so this kingdom will be partly strong and partly brittle. Just as you saw the iron mixed with baked clay, so the people will be a mixture and will not remain united any more than iron mixes with clay. In the time of those kings, that's I think where we're at, time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people it will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it itself will endure forever. 
This is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of a mountain, but not by human hands, a rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold to pieces. Wow. This eternal kingdom. And then just also reading from this page, this wonderful quote, Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, you all know, for us, to us a child is born, to us a son is given, the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace there'll be no end. Period. Wow. And several more that we just posted here. You can make up your own. This is just any ones that jump off at, at you as you're making your list. This one I love. Luke chapter 1, starting in verse 30 to 33. The angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, or Miriam, it would have been in the Hebrew. Don't be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. You are to call him Yeshua. You're to call him Jesus. He will be great. Will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. Again, this is just validation of all that had earlier been prophesied by Daniel. <clears throat> Praise God. Two more things that we posted. In Revelation eleven fifteen. you know this, the seventh angel sounded his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven which said, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. Praise God. Praise God. And for you and me every day, what does this mean? Uh, well, among many scriptures, we could have chosen this one you all know from Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you every day, every day. That's our word because you and I are part of this remarkable eternal plan of almighty god now praise god do we have our brother on from nigeria are you here brother come on um and give us uh the word that you had we we welcome you mm -hmm. i think you may be still muted there you go can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for the invite. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm just going to give a declaration. Um, you know, this is a new year for the Jewish people, and this is the year 5785. And... Um, a couple of days ago, the Lord began to speak to me about what he calls the glory generation. And I had little understanding concerning what that meant. I just wrote it down in my journal. But as I began to study about the year 5785, I realized it was talking about... Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. You're loud and clear. Okay, so I realized that what the Lord was talking about in the month of September when he began to speak to me about the glory generation, he was actually telling me about a season that the Jewish people, not just the Jewish people, the believers who are spiritually aligned are entering into. And so when you read the book of Genesis chapter, if you have your Bible, just Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, from verse 21. I'm, I'm making use of um, 
a, a strong concordance. So if you have a strong con concordance, you're going to see what I'm talking about. The Bible says, unto Adam also, and to his wife, the, the Lord God made coat of skins and clothed them. The word skin in the strong concordance is the word 5785. And you can also go down to the book of um, Exodus 22. When the Bible said, when the children of Israel saw Moses, they saw the reflection of the glory of God. They couldn't look at the skin. The word skin here is 5785. And, you know, that's a definition to the fact that God wants to reveal his glory to the believers. He wants to manifest his glory. When I mean reveal his glory, the glory of God is Jesus Christ. But there is a manifestation God wants to bring in our lives, the believers and to Israel. And so I want to use this medium, uh, this, this that manifest your glory. You manifest your glory. Let there be an appearance of your glory. Let there be a release, the manifestation of the glory generation over the nations, over the nation of Israel and over the lives of the believers across the nations of the world. Father, we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you. This is not a stop what I have to say. God bless you all. Oh, thank you, brother. That's very valuable. We receive you. God bless you in Nigeria. God bless you, man. Praise God. Yes, yes, yes. Well, how timely. This is all a revealing of the Lord's plan, eternal plan. Praise God. Praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Pastor Jeff, I, I think maybe Adani did not have uh, have the prophetic word he released today uh, and the decrees in front okay. of him. Um, if if he's still, is he still on the call? Let me see. He's still there. Adani, could you... Um, if 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 you could maybe later on maybe it'll be more appropriate later on in the call if you would read the uh the decrees that you made that Israel will flourish and maybe oh, that could be okay. later I think that's really important okay okay okay, okay. do you so want me to say it now yeah, go ahead, brother. Why don't we do it now? Okay, okay. I'm also going to send it to the chat. And so we can... Just give me a few minutes. I want to paste it on the chat. Well, okay. In the meantime, let me uh, call on Joyce. Go ahead, dear Joyce. Uh, I was going to pray over him. Thank you. Abba Father, we lift up this gift of God, this man of God. And we thank you, Lord, that you have plans to prosper him and not to harm him. Plans to give him a hope and a future. I pray in the name of Yeshua that you will release him into a knowing of where he is to go, where he is to sleep, where he is to walk, where he is to ride, where he is to sit. I pray, Lord, that there will be such a release of the angelic host over my brother that wherever he goes, the lost are saved. That wherever he steps, people are healed. That wherever he preaches, the lost are saved. That wherever he sleeps, the angels rest with him. And that whatever decisions he makes will be made by Yeshua, Yeshua, even before he has to decide. And pray, Lord, for my brother 
that his life will be a living testimony of who Yeshua is and that he will walk all the days of his life glorifying the Lord Most High and recognizing his presence in him and giving you the glory forever and ever until Christ returns for him. In Yeshua's name I ask this. Amen, amen. and amen. Oh, amen. Beautiful prayer. Yes, yes, yes. Well, brother, I see you just posted this on the chat. This is excellent. Do you want to read what you've posted? Go ahead. Okay. Thank you so much, Joyce, for, for that prayer. I received it. Okay. Israel, the nation of peace, the nation whose gate the Lord Jesus walked through. Among all nations, you are unique because of the history of divine occurrences, supernatural manifestation, eternal covenant, apostolic origin, prophetic heritage, and the appearance of the Messiah, the icon of the redeemed. The dragon and his demons have refused to stop troubling God's children. He has his children across the nations. But the God nation since Bible history has been has been his instrument our, and weapon for executing violence and injustice across the nations against God's children. Today, we remember the violence and the destruction done against Israel. So we decree, Israel shall flourish. The gospel of Christ shall prevail in the nation of Israel. The angels of God will protect the nation of Israel from destruction. The enemies of Israel will destroy themselves. The victory of Israel will be aired across the nation, such that the fear of Israel will be impacted on the nation. From today, there shall be no casualties in Israel. The missiles projected against Israel from the camp of the enemy shall return to the enemy's camp. The glory of God shall be seen over the nation of Israel. I decree peace over the nation of Israel. Amen. That's the Amen. declaration. Amen. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Excellent. Thank you so much. And thank you, Stefania, for making this happen, making the linkage. Praise God. Yes, 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 yes. Praise God. Amen. Well, we agree with that beautiful declaration. Yes. Woo! What a powerful call already today. Let me just show you on this next slide how you can use this with your teams, your prayer teams, all those around you. It's a very simple teaching slide. It's not even complete. We just ran out of space. But the point is this, Shuva is the Hebrew word for repentance, and it's his gift. It is a gift. It's not a punishment. It goes way back. Look at the book of Job, chapter 36, verse 10. He sounds a warning in their ears, orders them to repent of their evil. So this is no new concept. It's very, very old. Jeremiah 8, 6, I listened and heard, but they don't speak aright. No man repented of his wickedness, saying, what have I done? Everyone turned to his own course as the horse rushes into the battle. Yes, 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 yes. Now, I just also want to focus on two other scriptures here in the in the reality of the amount of time that we have on this call today. Second Chronicles 7, 14, you probably heard a lot of, but 13 and 14 should be read together. This is what the Lord said to Solomon on the completion of the first temple 3,000 years ago. He said, if I, God, Almighty God, if I shut up the sky so that there's no rain, or if I order locusts to devour the land, or if I send an epidemic of sickness, that could be also a, a moral pestilence, 
a epidemic of sickness among my people than if my people who bear my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn, that's shuva, that's repent, of their evil ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive sin, and heal their land. The other one that I want to point out is at the very bottom of the page, Luke 24, 45 to 47. This is the last chapter in the book of Luke. We often look at Matthew, the last chapter there, and the Great Commission, but here too, there's a Great Commission by the risen Christ. He says, this is again in the Jewish Bible translation, he, then he, this would be the Messiah, the risen Christ, opened their minds so that they could understand the Tanakh, telling them, here is what it says. The Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, <clears throat> and in his name, repentance leading to forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed to people from all nations, starting with Jerusalem. So instead of playing church, you and I were called as disciples to proclaim repentance and then forgiveness, remission of sins. It was a critical key element by which you joined the kingdom. You had to repent, turn humbly back to God, or to turn your mind and heart to him in the first place. So question, does anyone have a prayer in your heart for this gift of repentance to be spread among all Jews and Gentiles? You have that this on your heart? Francis. Yes, this go ahead. Francis. I went back all the way when you were talking about Jonah. On Yom Kippur, they read the book of Jonah, and we know that there was that um, lunar eclipse where it went through how many towns called Jonah and actually went to a town called Rapture. God is speaking loudly, and there needs to be a lot of repentance between Jew amongst Jews and Christians for not even acknowledging God's gift of giving us the signs in the heavens. So, Lord, as Yom Kippur is on Saturday, and there, there are many people going down to the Million Mom March, I pray for a spirit of Teshuvah, repentance to be upon them, and all Christians um, this, this Saturday, and all Jews, because you're cre trying to create us to be one new man in Christ. And not only are you a covenant-keeping God, but you're a God of order, Sadar. And we know that Jesus went to the cross for our sins, but he went to our, the cross for the sins, so that when we go astray, we can repent for it. So, Lord, I pray that there would be such a, a desire to know your, your, your holy days and what they mean for your kingdom purposes. Because it says in, um, in the Old Testament, I don't know if it's in Leviticus, I be believe it's in Leviticus, that these <coughs> holy days will be for eternity. So, Lord, we pray for the Jews and the Christians to come into that kingdom order, to be grateful to your plans and purposes, your order and your, um, your wisdom and your gift of <clears throat> repentance, so that we will be that one new man in Christ, following that narrow path of truth that you set forth with us. You gave it in the Old Testament, and then you sent your son as the example in the New Testament. So we thank you and we just pray that there would be such an outpouring of your spirit and you know who's going to receive it, Lord God. Let our hearts and minds be ready to receive that spirit of truth, repentance, so that we are that one new man in Christ. In Jesus' in mighty name, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. And Jane, so great that you've got your hand up. Go on ahead. <laughs> Uh, finally, um, uh, Heavenly Father, I pray for the repentance movement to move across every single continent 
And Lord, I'm asking you to start where it's the worst. Mm -hmm. And that repentance would fall. Conviction would fall. Lord, only you can do that. And we, your people, are asking you to do that. Fall, fall on, first of all, your people, and next to all of those unsaved. And Lord, every single continent in its order, Lord, and um, especially in Israel, that all the Jews can be saved, they can follow their Messiah. And this Jeremiah 8, 6 um, up here, it's on the board, it says, I listened and heard, but they do not speak aright. Um, no man repented of his wickedness, saying, what have I done? Everyone turned to his own course as the horse rushes into the battle. And Heavenly Father, that is a, um, an attitude of the heart that has taken over the whole world. What have I done? Let me just um, um, go on with all of my wicked deeds because I don't even judge them. Nobody judged them. I'm my own boss. I bind it now in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. I bind that um, attitude and I say no more. And Lord, I release upon them the repentance that your conviction will bring until they fall to their knees. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow, I love that. That was spot on. Thank mm. you, Jane. Perfect. Praise God. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Again, you're welcome to these slides. They're just teaching slides that you could put together. This one I love because the truth is in the book of Psalms, all 150 really, not only point us to God, but often, often, often point us to his gift of repentance. And uh, I'm just going to cite these two. Psalm 24, 1 to 6 says, The earth is Adonized and all that's in it, the world and those who live there. For he set its foundation on the seas, established it on the rivers. Who may go up to the mountain of Adonai? Who can stand in his holy place? Those with clean hands and pure hearts, who don't make vanities the purpose of their lives or swear oaths just to deceive. They will receive a blessing from Adonai and justice from God who loves them, who saves them. Such is the character of those who seek him, of Yaakov who seeks your face, Selah. And then also this classic one of David in Psalm 51, just 10 to 13, create in me a clean heart, O God, Renew in me a resolute spirit. Don't thrust me away from your presence. Don't take your Ruach Kodesh away from me. Praise God. Well, I'm wondering who, is there someone else who's got a prayer in your heart? Because I'm thinking we may have to close the call because of the uh, reality. This is the first time that we have been shut down this way. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Ah, William from Liberia. Go ahead. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for the source of today's meeting. We present Israel, your heartbeat, into your hands. As a sat, O God, while we await on the Holy Spirit, you say it is time for Israel to see and feel your sovereignty. It's the time for you, God, to move on behalf of Israel in the Middle East. Father, you said, O God, the Middle East have been joking with the fire unquenchable. And it is time for that fire, O God, out across the Middle East. As you say, you have allowed, oh God, the, the awakening move of your kingdom in the Middle East for your name to be glorified. We thank you, oh God, for raising all your righty right hand, Father, on the behalf of Israel. We thank you for bringing, oh God, this situation under control for your glory. We thank you, oh God, that 
the Middle East will come to know that you, Jehovah El Shaddai, you, Jesus of Nazareth, you are the Lord and the King of the Middle East, despite their rebelliousness. We thank you for mercy upon our lives. We pray for the NDR. We pray for all of the news, including the Australian news. We pray, O oh God, for Father November as we plan ourselves. We pray for your move, O oh God, in this place that your name will be exalted. We cover the rest of the team and everyone apart take the meeting today with your blood and we declare shalom in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, William. I love it. That was a beautiful prayer. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Well, and Joyce, do you want to lead us in a closing prayer? I think maybe that's what's next. This ought to be the closing prayer. Okay, there's Joyce. <laughs> Abba Father. We are, continually, we are continually humbled that you hear our every prayer. And what a privilege to know that our prayers have power and authority because of who you are in us. And Father, as we have spent today repenting before your throne, petitioning before your throne, singing before your throne, and worshiping before your throne. We just pray, Lord, that what segment for evil in this call, you will turn to your good and your glory as you have promised in your word. We pray let no limitations on what you can do so that everyone who leaves this call will carry a gifting of your Holy Spirit to turn what Satan meant for evil to your good and your glory. We pray for a lifting of the heads of your people, of the nations, that the nations might know you are Yeshua, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And we pray, Lord, that our prayers will reach heaven at last so that your Jewish people might all be saved and might all know you as Messiah. We pray the blood of Jesus over everyone we prayed for and for us and our families. And we thank you for the privilege of being in your presence today. In Yeshua's name, we give you praise, glory, and honor. Amen and amen. Amen. Perfect, perfect closing prayer. Well, shalom to everyone that will just show you our final slide. We we had more to come. There was just such a beautiful, beautiful time today. Yes, that's who we are, the National Day of Repentance. Keep us in your prayers. You can connect with us at globalrepent.com. And you share your testimonies with us. We send those out as testimonies, and that in turn moves other people hearts to donate to us and with those donate donations we then in turn can give donations to other pastors many of them in africa now who are preaching repentance with great results so praise god you can reach me at pastor jeff at repentday.com or susan at hammer susan one at gmail.com amen praise god and so we can look at the next slide. That was a beautiful closing prayer, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being on today. What a remarkable time. Yes, yes, yes. There we are. And look at that slide says this truth. Joy and fellowship follow repentance. Yes, it was a heavy topic today, but fellowship and joy always connect when we repent. It's a deeper type of love. Just knowing that you spent that time with the Holy Spirit, cleansing as his bride, there's a deeper level of unity and love among the brothers and sisters. So praise God. Praise God. So shalom, shalom. Tomorrow we're going to have another um, Shuva call, another repentance call. It would start later in the morning, about an hour and a half later than we started today. You're welcome on that. You're also welcome on the one that we do for Australia. Today we had at least 
three people on from Australia, God oh, bless, in the middle of the night <laughs> for them, early morning. Uh, then on Wednesday, we have a Cleansing the Bride Zoom, and on Thursday, Africa Neal's Zoom call. Each one it builds up the body, the kingdom, the Yeshua's kingdom, and each one we have honoring of the chosen people, the Jews. So praise God. So thank you all. Thank you all for today. Thank, thank you. you, each one of you. God bless you. God bless you. And uh, yes, you. shalom. May we Thank soon you. see each other again very soon. Shalom mm -hmm. today. Shalom. shalom. Thank you so shalom. much. Shalom. Shalom. shalom, everybody. Shalom. Shalom. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Shalom. God bless you too. Shalom. shalom.